Hello, Gary Johnston here again. This is part two of a two-part series in which I'll show you some of the ways that Rational Software Architect 8.0 supports business process modeling and service-oriented architecture design from start to finish. This part picks up where part one left off, so I suggest you watch part one first if you haven't already. At the end of part one, we had just completed incorporating the use of the new carrier service into our business process and services models. Next, we want to plan the deployment of our services, so we create a logical deployment diagram for this. To start with, we drag locations onto the topology to represent our company's operational locations, plus one more to represent the carrier's location, which we choose to model as simply the Internet. We add nodes to the locations to represent the IT systems that will host the services. We drag each of our participants onto the node that represents the system on which we plan to deploy it. We know that our services will need to communicate with each other. We could manually draw these required communication paths, but we can take advantage of the fact that we already implicitly defined them in our overall sequence diagram. The topology editor lets us drag the interaction onto it and will automatically derive and create the required communication paths for us. Note that we get some error markers. This is because we have just defined the required communication paths but we have not yet defined any actual communication paths between our locations. Fortunately, the topology editor makes it easy for us to do this by providing a quick fix that we can use to have it create the intralocation communication paths for us. Now I want to have a colleague of mine, Chris, review my models. So I've published my project to our Rational Collaboration Capability beta server and asked him to review them. From his hotel room in Geneva, he logs into the model server using his web browser. After glancing at the team's main dashboard, Chris goes to the models. First, he'll take a look at the business process model. It looks good to him. Next, Chris wants to look at the service interfaces. The panning tool makes it easy to move around if the diagram is very large. Now, Chris takes a look at the participants. Next up, the services architecture. Chris also wants to review the updates to the overall sequence diagram. The scaling slider makes it easy to zoom in and out when desired. Lastly, Chris looks at the deployment model. He has a concern, so he selects a relevant element and adds a comment.
Back in Rational Software Architect, I open the Comments view where I can read and respond to Chris's comments. I read the comment and reply that I'll run a simulated execution. I invoke model execution on the overall sequence I defined, the same one that I dropped onto my topology to create the required communication paths. In the model execution perspective, I'll size and position things so that I can see the execution in both the topology and the sequence diagrams. As I single step through the execution of the sequence, I get visual indication of where I am in the sequence diagram. When something happens that is relevant to the deployment topology, I get visual indication in the topology diagram as well. Now I'll let the execution run to completion. I see that Chris's concerns were valid. There is a lot of traffic between the ordering center and the accounting office. I decide that the accounting system really needs to be co-located with the ordering system, so I'll modify my topology accordingly. I'll execute the model again to see the results. I have several options going forward from here. For example, I could have Chris review the updated topology. I could also transform my model to produce skeleton implementation artifacts as, for example, OpenSCA composites and or Java implementations, which my developers could flesh out and code. But I'll leave that for another video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.